don't judge me on my singing. I'm not here for a singing competition. You know that, right? Yes? All right. So I started learning guitar when I was 40. Yeah? And you can clap for the spirit that I had at the age of 40 to pick up a guitar. And you would also wonder, why could I not get the guitar and play it live for you people? Yeah? Sari and guitar would have been too deadly a combination for all of you to handle. So I had mercy on you people. Namaste. Hi, my name is Shifali Raj. I'm an educationist by profession. I am an entrepreneur by passion, a life coach by choice, and a gender neutral person by attitude. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I love this movie and the song Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara because it, it talks about uncertainty that we experience in life every day. And we just get to live once. So whatever life embraces, offers to us, we must take it. We must take it. And I resonate with the theory of karma. So whatever we get in life is what we deserve. Nothing in this life is for sure. And that's for sure. In fact, living in uncertain times is the biggest truth that all of us in our lifetime have experienced just very recently. And precisely the reason why people say, you just get to live life once. Live it to the fullest. You never know what's in store for you in the future. Let me tell you a story. And how do normally stories begin? Interesting ones, once upon a time. So once upon a time, there was a beggar who came pleading to the kingdom of King Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir at, time was, at that time was busy, so he asked the beggar to come tomorrow. Now hearing this, the beggar had no choice. He left, and shortly after that, you had Yudhishthir's younger brother, Bhim, I'm sure the names are very familiar to all of us. Bhim picked up the drum and started beating the drum frantically. And with each tap that he made, he went forward, walking towards the kingdom. Now Yudhishthir witnessed the scene, and it was to so much of a surprise that he walked up to his brother and asked, what was he doing? Bhim replied, brother, I just found out you're God. Yudhishthir was stunned. He asked, what makes you say so? He said, brother, when the beggar came, you asked him to come tomorrow. What does that mean? That means you know that you're going to be still alive tomorrow. And you know this beggar is also going to be alive tomorrow. And I'm sure you know the fact that tomorrow he would still want what he wants today. And tomorrow, you will be in a position to give him what he actually wants. And I'm sure you know for sure that both of you are going to meet tomorrow. So when you have all the answers to these questions, it means you're God. Now, King Yudhishthir, he understood the implication behind his brother's words and quickly asked for the beggar to return. He handled his problem, and there the story goes. The moral of the story, no matter who we are, whatever be our positions, we cannot for sure say what's going to happen next. Therefore, live in the moment. Now, who would know um, uncertainty better than somebody who was born and raised in a typical big, fat, business joint family. Lucknow is my Janbhumi. Kanpur is my Karmbhumi. That's how I say it. Now, my story is not that of rags to riches, but definitely exciting. So back in the days when I was a young girl, I remember I had the privilege of buying expensive stuff and moving in imported cars. 
and suddenly dropping to a point where forget shopping. For every purchase, forget the purchase. My mother used to sew clothes out of worn out clothes of my parents, my papa especially, his pants. Because you see, businesses can go through losses. Yes? And life does not take a single second to take a 360 degree turn. And sometimes these instances can be very grave and life changing. But I've seen my family keeping that equanimity and thriving in uncertainty. I can recall months and months and months when our steel pipe factory was shut down. My grandparents, my bare mummy papa, my chachi chachu, my parents, they all used to slog during the day to bring the business back to revive it. But you know how the evenings were? All of them used to sit together, play cards, enjoy tea pakoras. And we kids, nine sisters and one brother, we used to gather together in the courtyard. It was an unsaid rule. 7 p.m., all of us used to reach the courtyard and we used to play Antakshari, we used to play name place animal thing, hide and seek, and that's how time just went by. Factory revived. We were back to our decent lifestyle in around two years. So just like nothing in this world is permanent, so on bad days, what really matters is your perspective and the steps you take to get through those rainy days, isn't it? The reality is we humans crave to know things in advance. We mostly control freaks, all of us. We want to take charge of our life, every moment of our life, and in fact, even control the lives of others, unfortunately. We want to know what's going to happen tomorrow, the day after, and even the day after. Some of us even want to know what we're going to be in the next birth. I remember asking a soothsayer once, what do you think I'm going to be in my next birth? That's how curious we are. We crave for clarity. We starve for certainty just the way we crave for food, freedom, and love. Our mind is wired like that. So we perceive ambiguity and lack of information about the future as a threat to our existence. That's how we are. We actually sometimes thrive on what ifs. What if it doesn't work out? What if I don't get a job? What if I fail in life? What if I get caught? What if she says a no? I should say, what if he says a no? What if, what if I don't deliver a decent TED talk today? Ha, huh, that's scary. You get the drift? So. Living without knowing the future can be quite hard, but it's interesting. Don't jeopardize the joy of living because we're going to lose the charm if we knew everything before it happened. In fact, some professions are a direct result of uncertainty. For instance, an astrologer, a soothsayer, a data analyst, a financial planner, no offense, gurus, Life's uncertainty has definitely paid their bills and take them to places. But coming back to the point, if you had the roadmap of everything that's going to happen in your life, and you just had to follow it religiously, would life be fun and hunky-dory? Guess not. Let me share a small incident that happened in my, my childhood. I was captain in school, and we decided to organize a fete as a fundraiser. So there were stalls allotted to people. On the D-Day, it rained cats and dogs. People backed out, and we stood as though lightning had struck us. So we all called for an emergency meeting, and the only thing we had with us was a coffee machine. No one to operate no glasses. And as much as I can recall, there wasn't this concept of disposable glasses. In fact, there weren't disposable glasses. So we had to hire 
those cups from tent houses. Now, the tent house guy doubled the rate. He took advantage of the, the position. So there was, there was no point. Now it was about we failing or succeeding in adversity. And like they say, charity begins at home. I called up my father and I said, Papa, I want you to donate 500 glasses to the fate, to the fundraiser. That's your contribution. And knowing the daughter that he has, he processed for a second, and then you won't believe in the next 45 minutes, the glasses got delivered to us. Luckily, one of the peers in the school knew how to operate the machine. So zip, zap, zoom. We were all set outside the gate of the college, and we sold coffee and patties at double the rate, and we raised decent funds. I didn't stop there. And please, don't judge me on what I'm going to say now. We even sold the glasses the next day. <laughs> and can you imagine the expressions on my father when I told him I did that? So the incident may sound very trivial to you, but it made me realize that you need to have it in you to thrive in uncertainty. It got clear to me that day, I'm decent in my managerial skills, and thus my vision for my future career was vivid that day. And I can go on telling you stories of my bad days. Life is full of ups and downs for all of us. And I choose to stand tall, learn from my mistakes, and learn from others' mistakes as well. I'm a perfectionist. Just kidding. I'm fallible, maybe more fallible than you. But moving on and taking life head on makes us stronger than yesterday. So like they say, when life gives you lemons, throw them back and ask for lemonade, chocolates, anything. It's butter. You might as well ask anything. And people say lemons are very expensive these days. So maybe you can keep them and grab tequila and salt. Yeah? If you ask me honestly, the concept of uncertainty actually keeps me on tenter hooks. I love challenges. And imagine how powerful we can be if we can trust the unseen. Just move with this philosophy. So let me share another story of a couple of years back. And this story taught me a lot of lessons like tenacity. So my mother and I run an NGO by the name of Earth. And one of our major projects for last seven years has been teaching underprivileged girls. So along with studies, we teach them life skills. We do a lot of extracurricular and co-curricular activities with them. So one of the days, there was a stage performance. There was this girl named Nancy who was heading the dance. She reported five minutes late to the event. Now, that was very strange, very surprising, because she's a very sincere girl. She entered, the teacher fumed at her, asked her why she got late. I too was angry, but then I was quiet. She looked at the teacher and she said with folded hands, sorry teacher, we live on footpath, and today our shelters got removed. So all my clothes and my household things got strewn on the road. I tried hurriedly to gather them, but it took me time. I got late. Please forgive me. The teacher was speechless, and so were all of us. The show started. It was received very warmly by the audience. And I asked Nancy to see me backstage. And when she came, I asked her, how is it that you plan to live your life now? What is it, where are you going to live tonight? She said, ma'am, don't worry. Though my dad is an alcoholic, my mother and I will work out something. And she said very smilingly, sky is ours. She said, her mother says, whenever 
there are bad times. This too shall pass. Tough conditions make us stronger. I was flabbergasted. Wondered who's teaching whom. Was I teaching her something in life or she was teaching me life lessons? And she taught me so many things that day. She didn't miss the show. Look at the commitment she had. She faced her difficulty bravely, tenacity. She wasn't crying, she wasn't complaining, she wasn't cribbing. She was fearless, optimistic, hopeful. In one line, I can say, she knows how to prosper, thrive in adversity. Let me give you another example. I'm a gender neutral person and I have ample reasons for it. Being a woman in profession is not easy. I don't think I need to tell anybody about that. So being a woman running my own setup right after 12th standard was definitely a Herculean task. And I went on to additionally take the responsibility of working as managing director with a group of institutions. My work requires meeting government officials, corporate heads, meeting all age groups, students to parents, I mean, sorting problems of varied kinds, extensively traveling. In a male-dominated setup, at times it can be a little challenging. But in spite of all the odds, I've never played the gender card. I have conducted myself in a way that I don't need to remind myself or others to remind me of my gender. I hate when people say ladies first, open doors for us, pull chairs for us. I never experienced it, nor did my parents ever taught us that. I've worked super hard to wherever I am today, wherever small. Pardon me for keeping my modesty apart today, but I guess we are here to share our life experiences with all of you. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So one thing that is etched in my mind is that if good times come, bad times too will come. You can't escape that. And when bad times will come, good times will follow. And what is important is that you maintain the equanimity. Universe is full of paradoxes. Uncertain times can bring out either the best or the worst in us. The crux is it's okay to feel okay when things go wrong. It's okay to feel scared of life when things are not clear in the present moment. It's okay to feel hurt. It's okay to be betrayed, to feel betrayed and worried and hopeless. It's okay if it doesn't make sense to you right now. And it's okay if you don't know what's gonna happen next. It's okay if you can't let go of things easily. Many times we can't. And it's, that's really okay. And you don't have to pretend to be all right all the time if you're not like that. The biggest strength lies in acknowledging your pain and your hurt, in accepting the reality and being resilient, getting back, bouncing back. Never forget, everything you're going through is temporary. Nothing stays forever. And just be willing to accept and move on. And when there are troubled waters, just whisper to yourself, to your mind, this too shall pass. Thank you so much for your patient listening.